All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about canny edge detection in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So at the end of this video, we'll see how we get this image here on the left to this image here on the right. And we'll actually be making a little uh, trackbar application, which will have some fun with the threshold values. Okay, so what is canny edge detection? It's an algorithm that's typically more robust than standard gradient methods. So a lot of times when we just do normal gradients, the result might not be so good. So um, in those cases, you may have to rely on the canny edge detection. Okay, so why do we need it? Uh, like we said, it's, it's gonna be more robust or more reliable, but um, in general applications, you might use it for things like object detection, image segmentation, or feature extraction, okay? So how does it work? The way it works is typically uh, it's going to be a smoothing application with Gaussian filter. And then the gradient of the image is going to be applied using a Sobel, which we talk about in image gradients. And then we're going to be applying a non-maximum uh, sub non maximum suppression technique to find the local maximum. So what this does is if you have like a thick edge, it'll transform it into a thin edge. And the idea is, you know, if there's um, if you have like a lot of peaks, um, there's going to be like one, one peak that's the maximum and then you just ignore the other peaks. So that's the idea with this because you could have a bunch of peaks here and maybe only one of them corresponds to the peak. So that is what non-maximum suppression is. And then you have double thresholding to keep the edges that go above the max threshold um, even if it's connected, even if connected edge dips into region between the max and min threshold. So we have a couple of cases that we can look at here. So um, we have two thresholds, typically a high and a low. So if you have an edge and it's all above the high threshold, then we keep it, okay? But here we have a B and C. So if you have part of an edge that's above, but it's connected to another edge that is between high and low, we still keep it. But if you just have an edge like E, which is just between high and low, and it's not passing the high threshold, then we would discard E. Okay, and then if you have something that's below the low threshold, we also discard it. Okay, so the only ones we're keeping would be these two cases. Okay, so this we keep, keep, keep. Okay, so that's the idea of the canny edge detection. Okay, so let's jump right into a coding example. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and read in some of our modules that we'll need. So we're gonna go ahead and import cv2 as cv, import matplotlib.py plots as plt, import numpy as mp, and then import os. And we're gonna call our function here canny edge. And then we have our if name equals main, and we'll call our canny edge here. Okay, so inside our canny edge, let's go ahead and read in our image. So root equals os.get cwd, and then we have our image path equals os.path.join here, and we'll pass in root. We have our demo images, um, tessa.jpg, and then we have our image equals cv. I'm read, and then we'll pass in our image path. Uh, and then we want to convert BGR to RGB, so we have image equals CV dot CVT color, and we pass in our image CV dot color um, BGR to RGB. Okay, so now we have our color image. Uh, let's go ahead and rescale our image because it's a little big, so we have height, uh, width, and then the third argument, which we don't care about, image dot shape. And then what we want to do is have a scale factor. We're going to get one fifth of the image. And we're just scaling it because if it's too big, it'll take up, um, it'll go out of the screen. So that's the main reason. So we're going to call this height scale and then we'll cast it with an int. And we have height times our scale. Then we'll repeat the same thing for the width here. Okay, so we have our height and width scaled. And then our new image, we're just going to use a cv.resize function. And we'll pass in our image and a tuple, which will be our width scale and then our height scale. 
and then our interpolation method. We'll just go with um, cv dot um, inter. Go with the linear is fine for this. Okay, so we have successfully resized it, and we'll make do some fun with a trackbar. So we have a window name, which we will name Kenny. And then here we're gonna do cv.named window and then pass in our window name. And we'll create our two trackbars. So cv.create um, trackbar. And then we have the name of our trackbar, which will be min threshold. And we'll pass in our window name and then our value zero, and then 255. And we'll need a callback. So right now our callback, we're actually not gonna do anything. So we'll have a placeholder and we'll just call pass. Okay, so this will be our placeholder um, function. So we'll repeat the same thing for our max threshold here. So that will be pretty much the same. And then we'll put it inside a loop. So while uh, true, can't type right now. So while true, uh, what we want to do is have an escape. So if cv dot wait key, and if that equals the q key, so q for quit, we're gonna break out of this. Otherwise, we will extract our min threshold value using cv dot get um, trackbar position, and the name is gonna be min thresh and we'll pass in our window name. Then we'll repeat the same thing for our max. So here, we're gonna just change this to max. So we have our two track bars we're getting positions of, and then we'll update our CV dot um, um, show here with our canny function. So we have our window name, and we could go ahead and call our canny function here. We're gonna just call this canny edge equals cv.canny. So what takes it in is the image and then our min threshold and then our max uh, threshold, okay? So here, lastly, we'll pass in our canny image. And then all we gotta do now is just have a close with a destroy all windows here. That way when we're done, it'll close out. So if I go ahead and run this program, we should see our results. So notice here we have our min threshold and our max threshold. So if I slowly increase the max threshold, you can see um, more of the good edges show up and some of the nonsense edges start disappearing. So if I drag it all the way to the end, you can see that's how it looks like. Now if I start playing with the min threshold, notice what happens. Some of the edges gets better and we could see a lot more of the car, okay? But notice when the car structure starts getting clear, um, I'll lose some of the details of the seats, right? So that's kind of the drawback and you just kind of have to find a balance between what you want. So here you can see a lot of the car seat detail, but here it's better, okay? so. For me, I kind of like somewhere in between here. Maybe this is a little bit lower. So something like this might be pretty good. And then maybe you could apply like a secondary filter to have the results look better, okay? So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.